All right, so today we're going to be working on a MacBook Air that is dead and doesn't turn on. Uh, this is an interesting one. So this is somebody who came here about six months ago because they, they had fucked up their operating system install, installed a bunch of shit that they weren't supposed to. So we fixed that for them, and then they come back about seven or eight months later, and their machine is 100% absolutely positively dead. And guess who gets blamed for it? Yep. No. Absolutely not. So let's see. So let's go over what could be possibly be wrong here. So this is a MacBook Air board. This is the 820-3209. So I'm going to plug in the charger here and see what we find. Now, as I've said in many other videos on this channel, which you should watch before watching this one, because I'm not going to go over every single little thing from the beginning because I got a lot of stuff to do, but I have done that in other videos. The PP Bus G3 Hot Rail is the primary rail for most of the machine. And that's supposed to be 8.4 volts in a MacBook Air. You'll see that in the schematic. And on this one, it's 0.696. So what's going to cause that to happen? Let's see if it's a short to ground. So I put the multimeter in ohms mode. And let's see if I, what I get here. So there is 0 0.02 ohms to ground on my main power rail? Hmm, that's no good. So let's put this thing on and see if anything actually gets hot. Now remember, when there's a short to ground on PP Bus G3 Hot, PP Bus G3 Hot powers a lot of different things. And one of the things that it powers is the buck converter for the CPU. So let's say one of the high side MOSFETs, and again, if you don't know how a buck converter works, you should look at my videos where I've talked about how a buck converter works before we get to this one. So let's say one of those is shorted. So it's a, the whole idea with a buck converter is the transistor is going to switch on and then off and then on and then off and then on and then off. And then 8 volts, you're going to have a pulse of 8, then 0, then 8, then 0, then 8, then 0. And through an inductor and a bunch of capacitors, that 8 and 0, 8 and 0, 8 and 0 will be averaged out to something like 1 volt. Let's say that, that, that transistor is stuck. It's on all the time because it's broken. What's going to happen is it's going to send the entire 8 volts through. So that's why I'm not going to just plug in the power supply here and see if anything gets hot. Because on the A203209 board, you very often have one of the high side CPU MOSFETs go bad, and you'll be able to tell because when you. Now, the, again, the thing is, this is a smart mich little machine. It knows that there's a short circuit, so it's going to limit the charger power so that PP Bus G3 Hot is only putting out 0.5 volts. Nothing is hot yet. Hmm. Let's see. Now, if I were to remove that CPU heatsink, would the CPU get hot? That's one way, because here's the thing. If I just shove 8 volts in there, you know what's going to happen? If that's going straight to the CPU, my CPU will see 8 volts, my board will be dead, and then the person who blamed me for killing their board because I, you know, I had the audacity to remove MacKeeper from their computer, uh, they'll actually be right. I will have killed it, and I am not going to give this person that satisfaction. Uh, customer, customer. The thing is, like, I get it. Because I've had a lot of issues with web hosts and uh, recently where I had a web developer do something and then right after they do it, something else doesn't work. And like, that wasn't me. And it's, you know, like, at 157 it stopped working and 156 is when you SSH'd in. It's like, nah, fuck out of here. But with stuff like this, you really, you're going to have people that they really hold you responsible for everything. I mean, like you install OpenOffice in 2012. In 2017, their power supply dies. That fucking computer guy, you know? It's one of, it, it happens a lot. Yeah, CPU is getting warm, and it's not the caps that are next to the CPU either. Or is it? Or is it? So the CPU is... Oh, you're boiling. I didn't even have to inject voltage here. Now let's go over to my short detection test. By the way, you may notice that this looks a little better. I got some new capture hardware recently. Uh, unfortunately, I only bought one just to see how it works. The whole idea is there's a color space that issues. So my original HDMI dongle wasn't able to deal with the 422 uh, color that comes out of the camera and the microscope camera. So it was limiting and estimating things. I'm not smart enough to know how this works, but what I do know is that the $300 USB dongle that I have actually works worse than the $189 black magic thing. So when I, I used an HDMI splitter, uh, just to see what it would look like in the picture-in-picture -picture direct on the TV and through the capture hardware. The black magic looks exactly the same as the direct output from the camcorder to the, t to the monitor, whereas the Majorwell thing I had doesn't look exact. But what do you expect for a fucking HDMI device anyway? So let's take a look over here, and let's do a little bit of short detection. 
So my method of short detection, again, I'm a cheapskate. I don't buy free spray. I'm a fucking cheapskate. I'm not going to spend 20 bucks on a little can of shit. No. So what I do is I just put alcohol all over the board, and then I look for the region that the alcohol disappears from first. Hmm. Where is it sizzling? Hmm. What is the cause of my short? Hmm. Is it that capacitor that is sizzling? It's actually kind of hard to tell here because it could be the left one or the right. Nah, it's you. See, ah, fuck out of here. I ain't spending money on free spray. I am a cheapskate. I'm not gonna buy. A th I'm not buying an X-ray machine. I'm not buying a FLIR cam. I am sticking to alcohol because it will evaporate instantly. So, hmm, which capacitor is fucking up my board? Hmm. So I actually could have run voltage through there and I wouldn't have killed anything. But still, it's always good to be safe. And again, that was burning even at the 0.5 volts that I had. So you saw that the voltage that I had on PPBush G3 Hot, the voltage that I was getting was actually, it, it was 0.5 volts. 0.5 volts is not a lot. And it was still enough for you to see that there was a short there. So let's get my Weller station hot here so that I can remove that thing. And we are going to remove that thing. So here we go. So let's get the Weller hot. Nice and ready. Now that's a big capacitor, so it's going to be a little bit of a pain in the ass to get off. So I'm going to get the Weller turned up nice and high. Make sure that I keep this unplugged. This nozzle's a little, probably a little too big. I should put on the smaller one. Oh well. Come on, get my cap off. Hey, I almost forgot to turn on the air filter. Whoa, that's a big no-no around here. No soldering without the air filter. This board, these boards are really hard to remove things from. It absorbs heat much better than their older models. And I don't know if that's really a good thing. All right, so now that, I'm not going to be able to solder that with the standard micro pencil that I have here. I need the bigger iron. So I'm going to unplug this one. B Shut the fuck up. Who the fuck at Hacko decided to make this thing do that? I really, I want to meet the person who decided to make this thing beep. I want to force them to sleep in a room with this. I want to tie them to a chair. Oh, shut your mouth. It also doesn't like when you switch irons. That's its way of telling you to buy the FM203 instead of the 951 and just switching irons all the time. Watch. It'll shut up in a second. It will shut up. There we go. Didn't have to do anything. Just You just have to wait it out. You know, it's like marriage. All righty. Okay, we've got some... Solder over there. Solder. I mean solder. I don't want to piss anybody off now. And let's grab a capacitor. Let's find a board that has those capacitors left on them. This is going to be a tough one. <sighs> I've stolen almost every capacitor in that area from every board. As you can imagine this is a very common problem. But having donor boards is a good thing. It makes life a lot easier. Seriously, ah. you're not polarized, are you? That would really suck since...
you know what? I'm a sissy, and I freak. I don't. It'll actually take me less time to walk over here than it would to find the schematic and see if that's polarized. I know. I'm being an idiot. I should just look in the schematic to see if it's polarized, and if so, what way. But it will literally take me less time to simply walk over here and look at another board that is the same type than it will to open the PDF, then open the board view, then find that cab, then a control F. I mean, just saying it takes time. Can you imagine actually doing it? It would just be... Ugh. So much wasted time. So what is your orientation? Okay. The M in the lower right corner. So I would have had the orientation wrong. Why isn't it a good thing that I checked? And again, if it's not polarized, it won't really matter. Oh, well. Let's blow this on the board. Once it blows its way on the board, then I push it down because I want to make sure that it's actually not just floating on the solder. Again, it's really important to have things flat on the motherboard because if they're off the motherboard, then it's easier to knock them off. Get some, it gives you leverage to knock it off. Because we don't want leverage to knock our components off of the board. That's not a good thing at all. Well, isn't that a pain in the ass area to get to? Just want to make the joint look a little nicer. Get rid of the excess under there so there's already some flux. And yeah. Don't go nuts touching it up. No reason to go nuts t touching the joint up. That's a big problem. There's actually this great article online that I want to feature in another video. It's on IPC certifications and how I, why the guy thinks that the entire idea behind IPC certification is crap and not really just why IPC certification is crap. I shouldn't say that, but why a lot of the rework industry is really kind of full of shit. The whole idea is that a lot of the times they're telling you to rework joints that look, that aren't cosmetically perfect, but that are electrically sound and really good joints. But the whole idea being that you're going to rework a joint and that the joint that you're reworking is a joint that is fine but by, by heating it, you're now heating the component attached to it again. And the more you heat the component, the greater likelihood it is that it's going to fail. So you're making stuff that looks nice, but that's actually a ticking time bomb compared to before. And you're actually paying a reworker labor to sit there and rework joints that would have otherwise been good. So you're increasing the cost of the product that you're selling, which is crap. And, oh, come on. Give me a green light. You had one before, you mofo. There we go. It was just being a troll. As you can see, fan here is spinning. See? Oh, you can't see because the. F there we go. Fan is spinning. So we fixed the problem. And yeah, that was just a capacitor shorted to ground on the line. I ha again, I didn't even open the schematic to do this. I haven't opened the schematic or the board view. I guess I should do that because at the end of the video, I always like to give you a little recap of what it is we did to actually fix the problem. So that would be a nice thing to do here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the view where you can see what's on my computer screen. Let's find the capacitor. That capacitor was, I believe, this one, C7620. So C7620. So this is a capacitor for the CPU VCCIO 1.05 SO regulator. So this is the power line that comes on in the CPU before V-Core is present. So the certain parts of the CPU turn on before V-Core turns on, and this is one of them. And PPVIN, SO, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Let's see where that comes from. So that is a subrail of PPVIN. Let's make sure this is still going yet. All right. It's a subrail of PPVIN S5, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah is a subrail of PPBush G3 hop. PP bus G3 hot is the rail that we shorted to ground. This is G3 hot, meaning always present rails. Why they call it G3 hot is beyond me, but always present, meaning it should probably always be there. It says voltage 8.4. My voltage on it was 0 
And that's again, this is I, I've gone over this problem in a few other videos. It's a basic, basic, uh, short to ground. Um, it's not always going to be that capacitor. It's not always going to be that that is short to ground on this board. You will always have to figure out what the problem is for yourself. You can apply my solution to your problem because you may have a different problem than the problem I have. Again, what I'm trying to get across with these videos is not that you do monkey see monkey do. You're like, oh, I'm going to remove the same capacitor Lewis did and maybe my board will turn on. What if that's not the capacitor that's wrong on your board? What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get you used to analytical thinking and problem solving so that regardless of what your problem is, even if your problem is different from my problem, that you can solve it for yourself. So hopefully this has helped you.